So we're going to talk, obviously, the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. And we're going to, in talking about that and just looking at Scripture around that, we're going to show you Jesus was not just a prophet or a righteous man as the Muslims and other people would have you believe. He is God among us. So just quickly here, as you can see, in the beginning, Bereshit, and you should have heard a lot about this, especially if you're in the Watchman community, Bereshit bara Elohim, and then it carries on, et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz, all right? So two things I want to point out, Elohim is how we refer to God for the very first time from the beginning of the Bible. Elohim, rulers, judges, divine ones, gods, plural. And in the Hebrew, the direct, the perfect translation here for Elohim is God's, plural. We are not multi-theistic. We don't serve many gods. We serve one God. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echat, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But he is three in one. And this is something the world cannot wrap their heads around. Even the church struggles to wrap their heads around this. So again, I'm going to show to you how clearly the Lord shows us in Scripture these things. That's the first thing. So Elohim, gods. And then it says here, et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. So the et here is Aleph Tav. And the Aleph Tav in these two spots refer to the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ. And this Aleph Tav was there and part of the creation of the heavens and the earth. And then you go to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and this life was the light of men. The light came, and so on. You know the verses. There it is. God's, I left off Jesus, created the heavens. I left off Jesus. And the earth. He created all. This is Timothy, my son. He's got his take on this. Tim, what is your take on the Trinity? God is like a three piece puzzle. Each one of the three parts of God is a different piece, each serving its own purpose. And without one of them, you won't have the full, clear picture of who God is. Each piece has its own direct purpose, but literally, if you take one out, you won't have. The full picture of God. Like the Old Testament has God the Father and the Jews are focusing on the God the Father piece of the puzzle. But they don't get the full picture of who God really is because they've taken out the Jesus piece of the puzzle. And many Christians today that are disregarding the Jews and what if, whatever's going on over there and disregarding them as God's people are essentially cutting out the Old Testament God part of the puzzle. Therefore also not having a full clear view of the picture of God and obviously the Holy Spirit that brings it all together the middle piece of the three pieces it just clicks everything and when you finally get to that point where you get to view and understand all three pieces of God's puzzle the picture is so amazing thank you okay so triune God and Jesus being God. These are difficult topics that a lot of preachers and ministers don't want to talk on. And I've heard really bad analogies. Um, he's like the sun. The sun gives you life and he gives you heat. And it's this and that. It's a fire and it's a... No, really bad analogy. Those things are not equal. It doesn't work for me. Uh, there's the egg analogy. There's the water analogy. You know, mist and ice and liquid. No. <clears throat> These things don't work as a representative of who the Trinity is. But we're trying to wrap our heads around it. And in a very big way, you can't really come to a full understanding of this until you stand before God on that day, which is very, very near to us. So let's just delve into what the Word of God says and look at these things. We've touched on Elohim, the plurality of it, God's in the beginning. God's created the heavens and the earth. And we've touched on Et Aleph Taf, which is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, Jesus. He was there in the beginning with God, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. And then we look at our very next point now, Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, Elohim again, let us 
make man in our image, after our likeness. So what he's telling you here is he's confirming because he's already said, and God said, and the God used here is Elohim. So he's already told you gods. Let gods make man in our image. He's telling you again, there's more than one. In our likeness, more than one. You can't miss this. There's no misunderstanding. God is making a point here three times, actually. God, Elohim, number one, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Then when man gained the knowledge of good and evil, God said, this man has become as one of us, plural, Genesis 3 verse 22. Before God judged at Babel, he said, let us go down, Genesis 11 verse 7. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Isaiah 6 verse 8. Do you see how regular he's showing you there's more than you understand? There's us, three in one. Isaiah records the second name of God, which is plural. The name maker, Isaiah 54 verse 5, is plural in the Hebrew language. This verse then names three who are God. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Isaiah 54 verse 5. How perfect is that for an explanation of the Trinity? For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Three together the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. It's perfect. That, that's my go-to Trinity verse right there. These plural names of God suggest what we know as a plural unity. Three in one. Isaiah's vision of God included the threefold designation. Isaiah 6 verse 3, he says, Holy, holy, holy. He doesn't say holy once. He doesn't say it twice. He doesn't say it five times. He says holy, holy, holy. Three in one. When Jacob blessed his son Joseph in the name of God, three times he identified God differently. Genesis 48 verse 15 and 16. The ironic benediction given by God for recitation by Israel's first priest was also threefold in nature. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Number 6 verse 24 to 26. Three blessings right there. Three. Why three? The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. It's, oh, it's so beautiful. While these are not conclusive in themselves, most biblical theologians this one included agree that the threefold emphasis in the worship of god allow for the threefold person of god all three persons are distinguished as god not one is god and the others are not a third inference to the trinity in the old testament is the practice of distinguishing between god and god the judgment by the Lord on Sodom and Gomorrah distinguishes between the Lord on earth and the Lord in heaven. Shocking, right? Genesis 19 verse 24. More specifically, the Old Testament teaches Jehovah has a son. Psalm 27. But let's look at the Lord on earth and the Lord in heaven. Genesis 19 verse 24. This, this one was beautiful for me because, yeah, the Jews you can't really argue with this. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. The Lord, Yahweh, rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord, Yahweh, in heaven. God, God, both of them. Okay, Psalm 2 verse 7. Let's jump there quickly. Again, I love it. Talking to Jews in Israel. This is another really fun one to use. Right. 
I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Isaiah 9 verse 6, the Spirit of God is also distinguished in the Old Testament from God. Genesis 1 verse 2 and 6 verse 3, the clear statement, probably the clearest statement on the Trinity in the Old Testament is Isaiah 48 verse 16. Because it demonstrates an Old Testament belief in three persons of the Trinity. God the Son is speaking in this verse. He identifies the Father, Lord God, and His Spirit as having sent Him. In the next verse, the Son is more clearly identified as God. Therefore, the verse identifies three who are God, yet it does not deny monotheism. Right, Isaiah forty eight sixteen. Okay. Come near to me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, it was here, and now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, and so on. Missionaries to the Jews often use this verse when challenged by Jews that Christians believe in three gods. Christians believe in one God, in three persons, exactly the way the Old Testament teaches. There's a reason they in Israel and Jewish communities everywhere in the world try and avoid a lot of Isaiah, especially those referring to Messiah, because it's blatantly in your face and not even referring to Bible codes that it was Jesus that was speaking about. And then if you go into Bible codes, I mean, everything is in there, everything. His name, he, Mary's name, Joseph's name, his disciples' names, places, people, everything, it's all there implanted in the word of God to prove what needs to be proven. The Trinity revealed at the baptism of Jesus Christ. The most vivid illustration of the Trinity is found at the beginning of his earthly ministry. He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan Valley, Matthew 3, 16 and 17. As God the Son was raised from the water, he saw God the Holy Spirit descending like a dove and the Bible records the voice of God the Father breaking the silence and acknowledging His Son from heaven. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh all together in one, in your face, in one place, proving the point. John fifteen twenty six. And when the Comforter, God the Holy Spirit, is come, whom I, God the Son, will send unto you from... God the Father. When the Apostle Paul pronounced his final benediction upon the Corinthian church, he did so in the name of the three persons of the Trinity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus instructed his disciples to baptize converts in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, verse 19. When a person was baptized, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were each identified in the act. Those three were identified. Converts were baptized in the name, singular, reflecting the unity of the Godhead. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity. Colossians 2 verse 9, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. What more proof do you need that he is God? Isaiah 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
Isaiah 44 verse 6. This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me there is no God. John 1 verse 14. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 10 verse 30. I and the Father are one. Matthew 1 verse 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Meaning God with us 1 John 5 verse 7 to 8 and this has been removed from a lot of Bible translations for good reason for there are three that testify the spirit the water and the blood and these three are in agreement referring to the Trinity the enemy does not want you to have conclusive proof <coughs> Colossians 1 verse 15 to 17. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. <coughs> How can you not understand that they are telling you clearly that He is God? While that baby lay in a manger, He was holding creation together. He was the reason the sun rose and set. He was the reason it rained or did not rain. He was the reason everything worked. He was in control of all and still is John 14 verse 9 to 11 Jesus answered don't you know me Philip even after I have been among you such a long time anyone who has seen me has seen the father how can you say show us the father don't you believe that I am in the father and that the father is in me the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. And he's constantly using that title of God, I am, I am. He's telling them, I am God in front of you in the flesh. In a form you can look upon without dying, without that full glory, just too much for you to handle. Who raised Jesus from the dead? It was God the Father. Galatians 1 verse 1, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10. It was Jesus himself, John 2, 19, 10 verse 17 to 18. And it was the Holy Spirit, Romans 8 verse 11. Who gave the new covenant, the Brit Chadasha? The Father, Jeremiah 31, verse 33 to 34, Jesus, Hebrew 8, verse 1 to 13, 10, verse 29, 12, verse 24, and 13, verse 20. The Holy Spirit, Hebrews 10, verse 15 to 17. Who sanctifies believers? The Father, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Jesus, Hebrews 13, verse 12. And the Holy Spirit, 1 Peter 1, verse 2. Who is the Creator? The Father, Genesis 1 verse 1, Isaiah 44 verse 24, Acts 17 24, Ephesians 3 verse 9, Jesus, John 1 verse 3, Colossians 1 16, Hebrews 1 verse 8 and 10, the Holy Spirit, Job 33 verse 4, who indwells believers? The Father. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 16 a 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16 1 John 3 verse 24 Jesus John 6 verse 56 Romans 8 verse 10 Ephesians 3 17 the Holy Spirit 
John 14, 16 to 17, Romans 8 verse 9 and 11, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16b. The Bible even describes this in terms of different combinations, Father and Son, John 14, 23, Father and Holy Spirit, Ephesians 2, 21 to 22 and 1 John 3 verse 24, Son and Holy Spirit, Galatians 4 verse 6. What one person does, the others also do in complete agreement and unity. The persons interpenetrate each other. They are one in purpose. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Three in one. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Now, if you read Deuteronomy 6 from verse 4, the beginning of the Shema, watch this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love Adonai your God. Three things. With all your heart with all your soul, and with all your strength. One for each part of the Trinity. You get to verse 8. Bind them as a sign on your hand. They are to be frontlets between your eyes, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Three things, three instructions. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Again, always in threes. John 8, verse 56 to 59. This is a beautiful piece for me when I was drilling into Abraham and they say Jesus never said he was God. He many times said it. The Jews wanted to kill him for it. And this is one of those times. Your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. So before I even carry on, that shows you God showed him that in his seed, Yeshua was coming and he showed him what it would look like, a vision of of the time of Jesus seen by Abraham. It's in the Bible. It's, it's all right here. Verse 57. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. Name of God. They took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so he passed by. Before Abraham was, I am, as in God. When they come to arrest him in the garden and he says, who do you seek? And they say, Yeshua, you know, we're looking for him. He says, I am, with power. And they all fall backwards as if slain in the Holy Spirit, knocked back by the sheer power and authority in his declaration of, I am God, you're standing on holy ground. That's absolutely incredible. And, and I hope that gives you more to understand. Not only the Trinity, the plurality of unity in oneness, but the fact that Jesus is God. Our God. Who came and died for us and rose again in victory and who we now wait because he is about to come and collect us. God bless. Keep drawing closer to Jesus. Keep drilling into the word. Keep seeking his face and just loving him and devouring as much as he can give you in his word and in times that you set aside to spend with him. Those times are never wasted. God bless. Men shalom.